if it's technological, it might maneuver when it comes close to the sun. That's the point along the path where you get the, the most benefit uh, from the gravitational assist of the sun. Uh, that's where we, when we launch a spacecraft that we want to boost in speed, we time the boost when the object is closest to the sun. And, and so if uh, 3i Atlas is technological, the, there might be a maneuver. Uh, and uh, in that case, of course, the stock market will crash if that happens. Uh, but that will be only in case it's technological. And um, in addition, you can imagine it uh, releasing uh, mini probes uh, that are sent to, to the various planets. It's moving uh, opposite to the motion of the planets. And that has the benefit that you don't have to chase the planets um, uh, like Mars uh, or, or the Earth. And you can just send the... Uh, uh, mini props from a mothership that would reach those planets. And I told the, the research team of the Galileo project that I'm leading uh, to look in the months ahead whether there is any unusual activity near Earth. Uh, we have three observatories, one in Massachusetts, another one in Pennsylvania, and a third one in Nevada, where we are monitoring the entire sky at all times. And um, if the, the, there is anything released by 3i Atlas, we might be able to see it. Could the emergency meeting of military generals and naval admirals today have anything to do with 3i Atlas? And just one more question. If it by any chance does start coming this way, is there anything we could actually do about it at this point? Well, um, it's moving relative to Earth uh, as it comes uh, close to the sun at the speed of... Uh, up to um, 100 kilometers per second. That's uh, uh, three times faster than the fastest rocket we ever launched. So there is no way for us to intercept it before uh, it gets uh, closest to the sun. Um, and then, uh, you know, after that, if it maneuvers and arrives close to Earth, there is not much we can do about it. Uh, and the situation would be, you know, if it's uh, advanced technologies that we don't possess, uh, we might feel just like uh, the Iranian air defense system when the B-2 bombers uh, showed overhead. You know, if, if you're dealing, and there the gap in technology was, uh, you know, just uh, several decades. Uh, here we are dealing with potentially millions or billions of years difference if, if there is an alien technology that arrived at our backyard before we uh, ever, even left the solar system you know, they might have science and technology well beyond what, what we possess. Someone's mentioning it would be the perfect candidate for an alien craft entering the solar system. If you were going to send a craft to a different solar system, would you make it look like a typical UFO that we would be aware of? Or would you disguise it? And also, I heard Ross say, well, it's moving too slow to be an alien craft because we see them moving a lot faster. You mentioned this thing is the size of Manhattan. I yeah. haven't seen anything the size of Manhattan before in any, in any video. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, so um, we don't know much. You know, if we are visited, we don't know much about the intent and um, any technology that is being used. And, and my point is we should not assume anything. We should not guess anything. We should just observe and figure out what, what it's like. And uh, so... Um, uh, you know, the first thing for us to figure out is whether it's a natural object or, or technological. If it's technological, then we should uh, uh, get as much data as possible to decide how to respond to it. Because, you know, it's very different from getting a radio signal from thousands of light years away, where you have the uh, leisure to decide when to respond. There is plenty of time that there is no imminent threat. Here, the visitor could maneuver and come uh, through your front door and we will have to decide. And I'm, I'm not expecting this to happen and, and until we have a, a clear proof that they, we are dealing with a technological object. Uh, but once we do, we might not have a lot of time. And uh, so we have to keep that in mind, you know, that there are contingency plans uh, very often uh, uh, in the intelligence agencies, in the defense uh, department for uh, circumstances that are Unlikely, they have a low probability, but we need to be prepared for that. We don't know how abundant are technological objects in interstellar space. So given that, and given that there are 
claims for unidentified anomalous phenomena near Earth, we should keep our eyes on the ball, the way that the um, uh, basketball coaches advise their team. You know, we should just look at this object and figure out what it is, rather than go around and ask people for their opinion and average that and say there is nothing there. You know, this is really not professional to do that, especially from someone who is focused on finding anomalous objects near Earth. Would you say it's more likely, considering it's going to the sun, passing by Mars and Jupiter, that it would be just a reconnaissance probe? Or how likely would it be that there's actually some type of either AI uh, fake being inside or, or real being? Well, uh, I don't want to guess. I, I just want uh, to look at the, all the data we collect. So I mentioned the, the anomalies that are known as, as so far. And, uh, you know, if as the object gets close to the sun, you know, uh, it, it will, if it's a comet, if it's a natural object, uh, then uh, it would uh, get evaporated more vigorously because it will get heated by the sun. You know, it's just like the interrogation tactics of uh, getting the truth out from uh, uh, interrogation is uh, uh, to put uh, to put whoever you're interrogating in a very uh, extreme environment. And that's what will happen when this object will come close to the sun. It will be uh, heated much more than far away. You know, the heating is the scales as one over the distance squared. So uh, as it gets uh, twice as close, it gets uh, four times the heat uh, per unit time. And, and we will see how it responds to that. If it evaporates just like a comet and, uh, and we take a good look at it uh, with a high-rise camera and it looks like a comet, you know, then uh, maybe it is an unusual uh, comet that happens to be on an unusual trajectory that happens to be unusually close to Mars and all of these unusual things, you know, sometimes uh, they happen. Sometimes lightning strikes twice, I don't know, but here it needs to strike uh, several times, maybe five times.